How's it going, Scrub Gamers? Uh, welcome back to another channel uh, and another deck profile uh, from Meet Jamie and Scrub Games. Uh, so today we're going to go with Veku Ramp because um, I don't know if you have seen or under a rock or anything, but we've got new support for Gogeta BR in general in set 11 um, and also some good, like a brand new good blue support. And um, I thought I'd, this is one of my favourite leaders, one I've had quite, like, quite a good success with in a tournaments last year uh, so I thought I'd go back to it and I just love this leader because the while the uh, front side while well, it does lack awakening it's like uh, back side is very strong um, so I thought I'd go uh, revisit it go back over and see if, uh, if it's still if it's viable or like to basically make a deck to give it a try and or haven't well once again just like my garnet profile last time um, I haven't tested it it's all theory but I will get around to test it when we only got untap and at the moment I've been on a cube drafting high so uh, but I will be testing it at some point and I believe this to be quite solid uh, so we'll go over it we'll go uh, so for anybody who hasn't ever uh, played this leader or hasn't been aware of it it's a uh, Gajit BR so it's a uh, yeah Gajit BR the blue one uh, from the promotion pack that came out, uh, so it came out at the same time uh, in the same pack as the yellow Broly. Uh, so on the front side, it's uh, a 10k like most, uh, no auto to draw, I think, but it does have a way to gain the uh, accrue van advantage by activate main, which is a once per turn. You can look at the top five cards of your deck, grab either a red Go uh, Goku BR, Vegeta BR, or, Vec or blue Vec uh, Veku BR. So I have a red, Go red Goku or Vegeta, or a blue Veku BR. Uh, so they all got BBR. And uh, add it to your hand and put the rest at the bottom. And then shuffle the rest back into your deck. And then it's got the aggro uh, aggressive awakening in the when you left the 4 or less. Uh, you can untap 2 energy after a bit over. And then the awake awakened side, which is a strong, which is really strong, uh, it's a 15k. And it's got the auto, so when it swings, draw a card. So you gain a card that way. And it's got two activate mains, so one's once per turn and one isn't. So the first one, activate main for paying two energy, so you got to pay at least two energy for it. You choose one of your opponent's battle cards and put it at the bottom of your deck. Of deck. So that means anything without barrier, any battle card without barrier on your opponent's field for two energy, you can spend it right to the bottom of the deck. Now that's very strong, as it's is is better than warping it because at least at the bottom of your deck, your opponent's got to draw into it, which uh, if they can't shuffle the deck, then they're not going to be able to get it back unless you do something, do it again because, as you know, once you draw the last card of your deck, that's it, game over. Um, and also, bit, so it's like, is a better, is nice permanent removal in a sense. Uh, and can you use as many times as you've got energy? And with it being a blue deck, uh, tapping out doing that, or you can get a lot of energy from uh, with blue, so it's not that much of it, it's not an issue to use it multiple times. And then the other one is an athlete main once per turn, uh, which is only energy. Place it in the drop area, and if you do, draw two cards. So that's really strong because where it's a ramp deck, as you uh, as you'll find out as we go on, uh, you can ramp up quite uh, quite a lot of energy quite quickly, um, and sometimes you'll have two more energy than you actually used to because like the maximum energy you want to go to in this deck is seven, uh, and that's for the uh, uh, basically the deck's um, uh, finishing turn, finishing play is seven of costs. So get up to seven is not not too bad, and where you can wrap up energy. Uh, you can easily sack off energy to draw two cards, so potentially every turn you can get uh, three cards a turn with this leader. So that's a lot of draw. So against things like hand destruction, it hasn't got an issue because you're, they, they can discard a few, but then you're getting three a turn back. So they can't discard if unless they can consistently every turn they can discard more than three. You are not going to have a problem. And um, it also makes a strong combination with the unison we play, which is the Zeno. So as you know, uh, Zeno is a two cop two specified blue unison um, uh, only 9k power so it's easy to swing over but it has a very strong effect in that it's got a plus two macro and minus five both are very strong effects um, with the first one as long as you need as mono blue you can take the top card of your deck put in your energy and then uh, at the end of the turn the uh, card that you place in your energy with that effect goes to the drop and also if you use that effect you can't wrap for the turn but luckily, the ramp we have in the deck doesn't ramp on your turn, it ramps on your opponent's turn. Um, mostly. Can potentially ramp on your turn, but it's very unlikely. And it's got the minus five of choose all battle cards you in both uh, choose all battle cards on the field, ignore a barrier and put them back to the deck. So that's very strong in the board wipe if you need it, but then with the leader's minus two to be able to put them in there. 
Uh, you're only going to need that if the opponent's got a uh, field full of barrier stuff. Uh, otherwise, and get to minus five is quite easy because every turn you plus and two. So the first turn you turn you play it, you're going to be getting an extra energy. Uh, so more energy. So one plus every time it's on the board, it's one plus energy what you charge uh, after you've charged. And getting two plus markers means the turn comes out as four. So it's got to be four. So you've got to put four damage on to get rid of it, which is quite difficult, especially on turn two. Uh, unless you have the right combination of cards. And it means it survives a lot, a lot longer. And in combination with the leader's ability, you can use the effect to, uh, to plus, plus two markers, put a card from the top of your deck in your energy, use that energy in some way, shape, or form, and then sack it off with your, your leader to draw two cards. And at the end of the turn, because it's not there, you don't have to sack it off. So that way, you make full use of that energy. That's really strong. And that's one of the reasons why uh, I eventually I did re uh, go back to the leader because of that combination. Because um, yes, with that, that's a very strong combination. Be able to get an extra energy for free and then get rid of it to draw two cards after it's used so you don't lose it out by just going to straight to a drop. So that's very mate. That's really, really good. Uh, now, as I said as well, the leader has a bit of struggle with self awakening. So we've got two, kind, uh, two cards to help self awaken, which is the four of the Vegeta, Savior of the Future, and two Resort Training. Now, the reason why these two is because one, the Vegeta is a very strong card in the fact that it's like Kaba for red back in set one, where when it attacks, you can take a life, and if you do, it gains 10k power and double strike for the turn. So it becomes a fit. So when it swings, if you take a life, it becomes a 15k double striker. And that's really strong for one energy because one, it's off awakens you, which is really, really, really good. Uh, and two, uh, having double strike means you could take uh, two markers off a of unison, which is very good. And going to 15 means you're normally hitting the early turn unisons. And even if you're not, you're pressuring your opponent's leader for a double strike, which is very good. So it's really strong self awakening for a very cheap cost, uh, and potential and better than giving it critical or anything else, because it help helps you uh, deal with your opponent's unisons a lot easier. And we got two as rock training because some decks you will get well, again, with the cover meta as well. You have some decks that maybe uh, where your where your opponent where your leader doesn't self awakening, they might hold back and just try to slow you up until later turns. Like uh, one deck I can think that's quite slow, that'd be uh, uh, definitely in the meta is Baby, and that's a deck that will negate most of your attacks and uh, just accrue advantage just by stopping you and just uh, gaining value. Like it might be able to draw to with the leader, but they might hold off on self awakening. Uh, so with result of training, uh, it's five costs, so you got to get to turn five, or if you can ramp higher, get to get to five energy at least. But the good thing is uh, when you do play it. Uh, you untap four four energy, and can flip over your leader. You can awaken your leader even if you have more than four life. So if you get to uh, if you get to your five energy, and your leader is still quite high life, which is still good, you can use the result of training to pay five, make it so your leader can now awaken and untap four. So you only it technically it's a pseudo one cost, but you got to be a five energy, um, and eat, and even if if that card comes up, like if you draw that card and you're already awakened or got rid of it, you can always just charge it. So it's, it's not really too dead. Like unless the only time it'd be dead is when you're defending, you need combo power and you, and, uh, you draw off of it from life or say a super combo. That's the time it's going to suck. But apart from that, you can always charge it or wait to use it if you can. Uh, and only two copies means is uh, you're not going to be bricking with it too uh, as often as if you would if you had four. Uh, so that's the only self awakening I thought you need. And uh, now we'll go on to the cards that you can search for the leader. So we've got uh, only 12 targets. Uh, that's what you need, because looking at top five is quite consistent to grab them. So like normally with this um, with that amount, you most likely to at least hit one per turn. And what we have is standard Veku from what we used to have. So the five pot Veku blue, uh, the one drop Vegeta from set six, and the brand new uh, Goku BR from. The tournament pack 11. So, uh, if you didn't know what these cards do, so the Veku is a Union uh, Union Fusion card. So, for free energy, by discarding a Vegeta BR and a Goku BR that are both red, you can play it for free energy. It has Barrier and Blocker, which means Barrier means it's, hard to, it's going to be hard to remove um, outside of uh, any, well, you're going to either need to fix it, go through Barrier, or be able to run over it. And being Blocker means it's going to uh, help you survive an attack. And then, and the good thing about that blocking survival attack is, is also is when it's KO'd, uh, you can cheat 
add up to one Vegeta or add a Vegeta and Goku from your uh, drop area to your hand. And if you do, take the top two cards of your deck and charge them. That's really strong in the fact that turn three you can play it, uh, which is the aim. Turn three, play it. Block the first attack your opponent does. That's 10k. Because if it's less than 10k, name combo, it's just rest mode, it's blocked attack, but as it fulfilled its, uh, its aim. And then you had the two cards you discarded back, so you've just lost the Veku, and then you charge two energy, meaning meaning the next turn you charge a six. So charge a six energy turn four is very, very strong. Uh, and it's basically that's the main aim of the get to help, to help um, ramp that way. Uh, and then we got the one drop Vegeta, and the reason why we got now the uh, four to one drop Vegeta and three. Two, oh, sorry, four of the Goku is because the deck, like most of the good players in the deck are blue, and it helps use the use the strong super combo we've got. And we we'll go over that in a bit. Uh, so we want to mitigate red because red in a uh, red in this edition, like dual color, can be hindered. Uh, having a dual color red and blue is can hinder it because if you get off the Zeno, you don't, you're not able to t use that energy. Like it comes in rest mode, you're not going to use it, and dual colors can kind of kind of clog. So I opted to go for just four of each, and the reason why the Vegeta one drop and uh, Goku two drop is because uh, both the both the one drop Vegeta's from set six. You play them, um, look at top three, uh, add a add a Veku like has the same it has the same ability, uh, ability but looks at three instead of five, and puts it at the bottom of the deck instead of shuffle. And the new Goku and Vegeta, the Vegeta such for Goku BR, which we're not playing in the deck. Whereas the Goku can help his leader awaken. So the leader, the Goku is effect is it's got two autos. The first one doesn't matter because we're never going to play it. I don't know the for it anyway. Uh, but the second auto is when it's used for a union fusion. You can take up to one card from your life and add to your hand. So it means when you use Veku with that, you can take a card and help yourself self awaken, which is quite strong. Because uh, it makes it. Um, yeah, it's just a nice, helpful self awakening if you're being stalled out uh, with Vacu as well, That's, and also allows you to drop Vacu. Um, and then the Vegeta's there uh, because, in serving the other one, because as I said, the other Vegeta only like searches for a Vegeta BR, uh, Vegeta BR, which we're not playing in the deck, um, where at least with this Vegeta you can help yourself. Uh, you can, if you've got a red charge, you can tap one, play it, to help yourself search for the other combo, the other piece, either Vacu or Goku. Uh, which is what you want if you've got the Vegeta and then go back to your hand at the end of the turn. So normally you've got the leader, the search, the Vegeta, the search, and you want to try and find the Vecu and the Goku by either mulliganing or using the leader's effect. Normally, what's best is normally not to keep any pieces in your hand if you don't want to. Like if you put if you put back the pieces, it's fine because the more pieces in your deck, the more likely you're going to be able to find a piece in your top five for the leader. Uh, and it means you can have the other cards, like you can have more, try and look into more Vegetas or something. Uh, for what you want. At best, the main core. I don't feel you need more than that because everyone's in clock. Because outside the the red card, the, the Gogeta and Goku outside of uh, being materials for Veku aren't helpful. And Veku normally you want to just see one the drop turn free to help you ramp uh, blocking and ramp. Because after that, you just want to get the deck. You then you go to turn six, survive that turn with the secret over which you should go over, and in turn seven you go off for your kill turn for your main aim. Uh, so if you're having too many clog, and there's a uh, better card to put in in place of them. So the rest, uh, so the next card we're going over is the super combo, as I uh, was just going over a bit. So we went for this one because, uh, if you didn't know, the new super combos from set eleven, they basically all have the same thing of where uh, you when you is all super combo tag no combo power ten k and have the effect of when you combo this card if you leave it. Life is four or less, and your leader is the same color as it, so this one's blue, and all your energy are the same color. You can choose one card from your hand, put it on the bottom of your deck, and if you do, draw two cards, and also gain 10k power for like uh, combo power for the turn for the back, what for the yeah, for the turn on that card uh, on the um, super combo. Um, so, with this, uh, what, what it does say, all your leader has to be all your, all your energy has to be blue. That's not an issue if you do charge red off of Veku or charge red yourself, because once you're awakened, which is what you'll be mainly using in Super Combos Defend, which because you want to flip over if the attacking leader, you're fine with that, it's not awakening you, and then once you're awakened, you want to use it. And the leader has the nice ability of being able to drop all energy, as I said, the draw two cards, so you can drop any red if you want any red energy, drop that, the draw uh, two, and then Super Combos are alive to draw you 
cards. So it's not an issue having the combo red and be able to search more cards for your deck to find the key pieces like your secret rare or the uh, Android 17 we're going to go over it a bit is a lot better because by uh, putting a card to the bottom you're putting cards you don't want to the bottom and draw two more cards um, so you're not really you know, you're going through your deck a bit easier then. Um, and then the next card we've got is the two uh, trunks cards so these are the two cards that um, basically you need the units in play to make that to get their uh, maximum potential and uses out of it. So the rest we have the trunks counterplay. So this is a count one of the counterplays that come out in set ten, where if you have a unit in the same color with two more mar two or more markers, you can play it with, you can play its counter counter play skill without paying its cost, and that's really good because it's a five cost. You don't want to be playing that. Uh, and but this one, but the trunks one is very strong and probably the, one of the strongest, if not the strongest, of the counterplays. Uh, because what it basically does is, anytime you use this count, if you use the counter play, you can't play any counter plays for the turn, which is okay because you've only really got one counter play, and normally you're going to be wanting to use this on your opponent's big play for that turn. Uh, you can either play it, and if you can choose to play it or not, if you do play it, you just play it. If you don't play it, the card uh, that your opponent's playing goes uh, stays in their hand, so it doesn't get played. Uh, so anything that doesn't have to deflect. It basically, this card just says no, uh, but anything, of course, if it's got deflect, isn't affected. So it's very strong in that when your opponent like taps out four of the player card, that doesn't have deflect, uh, and as a battle card, you just basically go, no, you're not playing that. He stays in your hand by discarding this. So it's very strong, and having it at four means uh, you've got more like well, because the leader can quite um, deck thin with the Goku behind. So every time, as long as you see a Goku, you're deck thinning, and when it's awakened as well, you're deck thinning a lot more by drawing three cards a turn. You most likely get into this. And once you've got the un and because the unit uh, the Zeno plus is two every turn, so go four markers on the turn it's played. It's gonna it's most likely unless your opponent can put pressure on without playing anything. Uh, it's gonna have two markers uh, and be enough. It always have enough markers for you to play it. And to help defend it against attacks, we've got the Ever uh, Trunks, which is the counter uh, counter attack, which is the Trunks uh, heroic prospect. So this is from the Torment Pack Ten. So it's got a counter play of uh, you get your attack and play this card. Uh, permanent says if you got units in play, reduce the reduce the cost of this card. Uh, if you got a blue unison in play, reduce the uh, cost of this card by two, so it becomes a one cost. So that's very strong. Only one blue. Uh, and then he's got an auto which is similar to Topo, where uh, when this card is played, during your opponent's during your opponent's turn when this card is played, uh, for the rest of the turn, if your opponent if your opponent wants to attack with any with a uh, I think it's any cards or any battle cards. I think it's just any cards. They need to put two cards from the hand on the bottom of their deck in able to do that. Commence that attack. So it means anytime they want to attack, they've got to put two cards to the bottom when they went uh, to attack. Sorry about that. Um, so that's very strong in the fact that uh, you could literally just negate the attack uh, and then put a condition on your opponent, meaning they're going to lose resources if they want to continue attack, which normally they're just going to go, right, that's it. Not gonna attack anymore. I'm gonna do whatever else I need to do that doesn't involve attacking and then pass. Uh, and having it for like with the trunks means you're gonna be able to see it more often. And it's a very strong card that you want to have. Uh, so that's the main like uh, unison package. Very strong, very defensive, which is what you want to do because you want to get to turn seven for your key players. Now the ca uh, extra cards we have to support this and support you surviving to that turn are four beans, two east coercion, and two dimension magic. Uh, the reason for this is bean allows you to use more of energy, uh, so it means you can make more energy for your players. Uh, this is really this is more used for offense than it is defense, but is still good on the defense, making your leader a uh, 20k for the turn to help survive more attacks. Uh, but mostly you're going to be wanting it for offense, so you can try and potentially uh, on turn three play the Zeno Unison, use its effect to charge an energy, swing, use some beans to untap, so you can then play back at the same time. Because then Bleku can uh, Bleku can then protect Zeno by blocking attack and give you and trigger its effect to give you more energy. Uh, so yeah, Zenzu is mainly there for offense, but it is really strong for defense. And we got Dimension Magic and Reese Coercion. These are more against because, as you know, with Unisons, they have no uh, defensive uh, defense step when they're being attacked. So when they're attacked, your opponent can combo to make the power uh, the same as or greater than its power, to, and then you lose a marker from it. And, uh, so the only way to stop prevent your uh, uh, units from losing markers from attacks is by negating them. 
and we squirting is a nice negate in the fact that it can negate uh, by tapping for one and then untap, untap an energy. So it basically it's a free negate as long as you have energy open and Merchant Magic is a nice one that can help you self awaken and also give you two more energy for, the t uh, for that turn so you can use it as a uh, way to combo for 10k if you need it or just mainly just to defend um, to give yourself more energy. But it's mainly it's mainly main use of dimension magic. It's in the gate, but you want to primarily try and use the sparking to help yourself awaken. If you haven't, if you have awakened, it's just there as in the gate. Uh, so that's the main reason why I play those because they're uh, is to help you survive and defend. Because uh, against aggression, like aggression, you don't mind. But if they, if it's really aggressive, you want to defend that, and because you, you want to get to turn seven. The reason you want to get to turn seven is because of the Android seventeen. Uh, so the Android seventeen is a deflect critical. 30k 7 cost with uh, 3 specified blue and it's got an auto of when you play this card uh, both players uh, shuffle their hands back into their deck and your opponent puts their drop area into uh, yeah you, so your opponent you, uh, so you choose all, all battle cards in your opponent's drop area and all cards in both yours and your opponent's hand and shuffle them into their owner's decks so it means when you play this it's got deflect so it means a counter play can't stop it and then when it comes down unless they've got something that stops all uh uh, stops altars from going off. Is always going to go off. Uh, shuffle all your opponent. Shuffle your hand in your deck. Your opponent's hand in the deck, and they're all the battle cards in the drop area, which is very strong because then it means they're now top decking. Uh, so, uh, but then so are you. And any if they've got a graveyard strategy or things that trigger grave battle card wise, they're always back in the deck. Uh, and then the good thing about that is it's a 30k crit, meaning it's not going to give you resources. But the good thing with this leader, why it goes really uh, very well is it is once you do that, deplete your hand, you can then use your leader's effect to drop an energy, preferably that when you put with, uh, put there with Zeno, draw two cards, and then when it attacks, you draw two. So literally, when you get to turn seven, you could be drop one in the drop the Android seventeen, uh, put both your yours and your opponent's hand to zero, put your opponent's battle cards in the drop back in the deck, and then you're gonna use your leader's effects to gain three new cards you've got at defend. And with them being top decking, as long as you can control the board, then they're not going to have a board either. Uh, and if you've got the unison, you're going to be able to stop their first attack. And then from then on afterwards, you're going to be then pressuring down. You're going to be uh, beating down their life uh, while they have no hand. Because if you any more Android 17 to drop after that, you can do that and it just basically puts you in a position where you're, you're amassing your hand back very easily, very quickly, and they're struggling to um, basically come back come back from that and to help manage your opponent's board we have the six drop Roshi uh, maximum muscle from the draft box uh, from the same draft box set as well I think or I, might, I think Android 17 is draft box one but it's, it's from a draft box basically and it's got a good thing so it's got quite a few keyword skills so it's got barrier uh, barrier critical and door attack and it's got an auto when it's played you can use two of your opponent's battle cards and spin them to the bottom of your owner's deck. So it means that's got nice board uh, board clearance, which is really good. Uh, so, but with your leader and with Roshi, you'll be clearing the board, and then after that, you'll be dropping down to 17. And it's got an auto of at the end of the turn, you draw one card. So, be on the pressure for two uh, two crit two critical 50 uh, 25k attacks is very strong. Spinning two battle cards to the bottom of the deck is very good for managing your opponent's. Uh, um, filled and then drawing a card at the end of the turn every time it's there is very strong as well. Again, so if you have Roshi down turn six and you control the board, pressure them with critical, and then drop the turn to 17 the turn after, you'll be drawing three off leader and one off Roshi if it's still there. So that's very strong. And lastly, the secret rare in this that we've chosen for the deck is the hat check. So, this is a very powerful secret rare for this leader because it. Because basically, once you hit turn three, which you should be easy to do being a blue and being defensive, a uh, defensive deck. Uh, this card basically says the first attack your opponent makes. Uh, yeah, the first attack your opponent make if you're, if you have, well, if your leader's blue and you have free energy, you discard any other card in your hand. So it could be any card. So if you've got a result training, you don't need it. Discard it. Basically, any card in your hand that you don't want, discard it. Uh, negate the attack and play itself, and your opponent can attack for the rest of the turn. So that's kind of tool. No condition of like you need to do something like discard, like uh, trunks, nothing. They basically just their first attack, they swing, you play this and they gate, discard another card, and they can't attack anymore. So it means 
they have an end of turn if, if uh, all their plays revolve around attacking or if they can only play things by attacking or they can do whatever they want to do with a pass but it basically means you're guaranteed to survive that turn that's very strong and it gives you a 40k beater as well so if you do that turn if you so if you tap, uh, get turn six so if you get the turn three the Vaku, use the Vaku, the ramp get turn six play roshi so you get that and then uh, and but tap out doing that you can then if as soon as they attack with the leader or something you can negate that attack and it basically it, that basically says you're now going to turn seven to get your play off so it's a very strong leader and one of the things you want to dig for um, to help you survive. So, uh, so that's the deck. Uh, so it's very easy. So the basic main what thing you want to do. So the first three turns until you get to free energy is use a leader's effect uh, to grab grab the pieces. Make sure you can make sure by turn three you have the Veku, Vegeta, and Goku. Uh, if you need to charge a red for Vegeta to be able to play it to help search the other two, uh, that's, it's not a bad idea because you can always use a leader once you awaken, which is what you want to be. Because as soon as you awaken, that's when you're drawing a massive amount of cards. You can always sack off that red energy to um, uh, make it so the super combo uh, is live to draw your cards. Then, uh, so it's basically using the first turn. But the one thing you want to do, you don't want to play the units in too early because the er as soon as you play, if you aren't awakened and you play your unison and you have no self awakening, your opponent's not going to be attacking your leader; they're going to be attacking the unison. And by using uh, using stuff to defend your, unis your opponent's unison apart from, well, you can use the trunks to defend the unison once you drop it early, but uh, unless you've got self-awakening, they're always going to be going for your unison to get rid of Marcus because if your unison is not on the board, your trunks is no longer free to counterplay, and the uh, counterplay trunks is no longer cheap to help you defend. Uh, so what you want, you don't want to, you don't really want to uh, drop the Zeno early. Um, you mainly want to drop it after you vacuumed, because at least that way, your vacuum will put you to five energy, and you can at least result training first. Like once vacuum, once vacuum was come down, blocked the attack, and charged you some more more energy, the result training is always live to awaken you at higher life. Um, but unless you can get down to four, you don't really want to play the Zeno because, it's, uh, well, you don't really want to play the Zeno if you can't self awaken, uh, because if you can't self awakening. The Zeno is getting you more energy, uh, but it's going to be drawing the attacks away from your leader, meaning you're not going to awaken and lose cards defending your Zeno. But uh, one good thing is if you if you do get pressured early, if you do have the self awakening, like you've got the Vegeta's and you can defend them and keep using that self awakening. If you get to turn three and you've got the chance to awaken, or even turn two, you can play the Zeno for two, use the effect to add a uh, energy to. Uh, to your uh, card from the top of your deck to your energy so it's like turn 2 if you've been pressured enough you've got some self awakening you can tap 2 for the Zeno, use the effect charge an A from the top of your deck use the leader's effect to uh, awaken to untap the 2 energy you paid for the Zeno uh, flip over, uh, drop the Veku and then sack off the energy you uh, put there with Zeno to draw 2 and then swing, so you've then drawn 3 cards that turn Charge an energy to allow you to play Veku turn two and Veku's down. So then you can block the first attack with Veku as long as it's 10k or more. To potentially protect the uh, Zeno. Let it die, grab out the two cards, um, charge two more energy, and then turn then that way you get a turn five and you can drop another Veku. So you can get the t uh, you can drop another Veku again if you want, and then your leader's live and you're just trying to aim and then to get a turn seven for a manager board. Um, so that's that's very strong uh, because even then you can go well even then if after that turn when you get charged to charge to five you can potentially re play Roshi by using the Zeno to charge yourself to six and if you have the hat jack you're then going right I'm gonna get to turn seven and then straight away turn seven you don't even need to ch uh, you just charge to a six units uh, units effect drop Android 17 sack off the energy with Gogeta the draw card and um, yeah just basically start grinding out the advantage by swinging well swinging just once with the leader to draw a card and then with the Android 17 and try and basically manage your opponent's uh, resources but as a result um, this as I said again this is all just theory I haven't actually properly tested but I feel with this it could be um, a very good contender for the upcoming format uh, the only issue is trying to get yourself off the soft awakening that's the only issue 
Um, that's why I say don't play the unison unless you uh, you can self awaken or you've already dropped the Vecu and got the uh, and use made and it's made its use. Um, but that's alright. Uh, if you've got any comments about this, any like ideas um, that I haven't gone over that you think might be good, or any comments or any questions uh, about anything I haven't covered, because I think I've covered everything, but uh, I am quite forgetful. I might have not covered something um, well enough. Just drop a com comment down below, and I will do my best to answer it. Also, if you like the list, like the video, and like my description of the cards, and like the uh, walkthrough, uh, walkthroughish bit I did, uh, then give the video a like so uh, it helps me it lets me know if you like this if this um and where to keep going with things like this and also that people are liking my ideas and my lists which is quite nice uh and also lastly if you want to see more things like this from me like more depth profile size from me or if you want if you're interested in cube drafting and you want to see more videos about it or gameplay i'm going to try and get some gameplay videos both in real life and also uh untap so people can see some players and uh, see some of these decks in action. Uh, then remember to sub uh, subscribe to my channel. It helps me out. Let's me know more people are interested so I can keep going. Like whether this is worth it, and it will be worth it. Because I just like I love Dragon Ball. I like the mechanics, the gameplay, and it's my favorite uh, franchise as well. Uh, so I'm gonna keep doing this no matter what. Um, but yeah, if subscribing, you keep up to date with things like this from me, and also this is my Facebook page as well scrub games that uh, I always post my videos every time I put one out post on there and also do try to do some articles regarding decks as well um, but yeah thank you for watching if you have watched this long so, uh, yeah, it's been quite a bit half an hour but then I always like to show the list go over all the cards and energy and go over a bit about the deck uh, to keep some more info you've got about the deck like it's, easy, it's easier to see a deck Listen to a bit about it and try it out because if you just see a list, you got to play it, you might not understand, but at least be getting a little bit of insight, it can help you play the deck to its better, uh, full potential. But anyway, thank you for watching. Um, next video I'll be doing is on Beerus, the uh, red Beerus, the only the only Beerus, really, the good Beerus, um, and that should be on Friday because, as I said, as I said, more videos now. I'm trying to get videos out on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for you guys. Uh, but, yep, yeah, but lastly, the last time. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.